Triads, everything you need to know so you don't fail music class in nine minutes. A triad is a three note chord that can be written in this specific shape of two stacked thirds. Most people think of them as a snowman shape, but whether you think of them as a snow guy, snow gal, or snow non-binary pal, the shape is key. Before we get started, you should know that, like so many things in music, familiarity with major and minor scales, key signatures, and intervals are fundamental to tackling triads. Check the links in the description if you need to brush up on any of those concepts. We generally think of triads as being derived from scales, like C major. For instance, a major triad is the first, third, and fifth notes of the major scale, stacked on top of each other. And if we think of each note of the scale as the bottom or root note of a triad, and then add notes a third and fifth above them, then you'll have all the triads from the C major scale. These chords are fundamental to a wide variety of genres and music traditions, as are the triads derived from the harmonic minor scale. Triads are often referred to numerically by their relationship to the home key. If C is 1, D is 2, E is 3, and so on. They're also named for the bottom note and one of four qualities. These are major, these are minor, these are diminished, and this one is augmented. Chord quality is determined by the specific intervals between the notes of the triads. To make it a bit easier to see the differences between chord qualities, let's look at four triads that all have the same root. Here's C major, C minor, and here's C diminished, and C augmented. A major triad is characterized by the intervals of a major third and a perfect fifth. A minor triad is just one note different. It has the same perfect fifth, but a minor third instead. The diminished triad has the same minor third as the minor triad, but the fifth is diminished. Finally, the augmented triad has a major third, but the fifth is augmented. To visualize this on the piano, here's the C major triad. To make it a minor triad, we just lower the third by a semitone. To make it a diminished triad, we also lower the fifth by a semitone. Finally, the augmented triad is just like the major, except the fifth has been raised by a semitone. To write a triad, it's common to start with the major version and then modify it as necessary. If you're writing a D triad of some kind, write the root note, build the snowman, and then apply the key signature. In D major, F and C are sharp. There's no C in this triad, but there is an F, so we add the sharp there. And there we have the D major triad. Now we can modify it to make other triads. If we want to make it minor, we lower the third a semitone from F sharp to F natural. If we want to make it diminished, we also lower the fifth from A to A flat. And if we want to make it augmented, we start with the major version, but raise the fifth by a semitone from A to A sharp. And those are the four options for triads built on D. Let's try another example in A flat. Write the root, A flat, and then build the snowman. Then apply the key signature. A flat has four flats, B, E, A, and D. We've already got A flat, and there's no B or D in this chord, but there is an E, so we'll make that flat. And there's the A flat major triad. If we want to make it minor, we lower the third from C to C flat. Diminished means the fifth, E, actually lowers to E double flat. And an A augmented triad would start with the major triad, but raise the fifth, E flat, by a semitone to E natural. And those are the four options for triads built on A flat. So these are the four traditional qualities of triads, and they're made with these specific combinations of intervals. But you might be wondering what happens if we use other combinations of thirds and fifths, since we've only defined a few of the possible options. Here's a grid with all the options of raised and lowered thirds and fifths. Let's take a look at the others. The major third and lowered fifth is an interesting sound, but a bit dissonant. But it's nothing compared to the raised third and lowered fifth. It's very crunchy sounding. And you can see why when you compare the two chords on the keyboard. The first chord has only a tone between the third and the fifth. But the second one has the third and fifth even closer, only a semitone away. These don't seem to be commonly used chords, but if you happen to like the sound of them, write some music with them. But I'm going to claim the naming rights with the Chordal Cruncher and the Chord Crunch Supreme. Next up, the perfect fifth with a raised third. It's an interesting sound too, but it's actually just a weird spelling of another chord, the suspended fourth, or sus4. It's not traditionally thought of as a triad because of the shape, nor is its close cousin, the suspended two chord. Both are commonly used and often precede a major triad, which helps explain the name, because the middle note feels like it's suspended and wants to move to the third. 
and combining both suspended chords is a nice sound too. There's just two left, the raised fifth with either a lowered or raised third. You'll find they don't sound quite as odd as you might expect. It might not seem obvious at first, but these are actually not triads built on C. If we respell the G sharps as A flat, and the E sharp as F, and then arrange the notes into a snowman, we see that they're actually more familiar than they first appear. The first one is just an A flat major chord, and the second one is an F minor chord. The original versions were just spelled oddly, and the shape was different. Which brings us to what happens when the triad isn't in a snowman shape. These are called inversions. Inversions occur when the bottom note of the chord is something other than the root note. These three chords all have C, E, and G, just in different shapes, or inversions. The snowman shape is called root position. If the third is on the bottom, that's known as first inversion. And if the fifth is on the bottom, that's known as second inversion. It's sort of like if the parts of the snowman got messed up, but all the original parts are still there. When identifying chords, you'll want to figure out what the root of the chord is by rearranging into a traditional snowman shape, and then analyze the other notes to identify the chord. One of the most common uses of inversions is to improve voice leading, which is related to how notes in chords or melodies move as harmonies progress. Let's say a piece of music moves from C major to F major to G major and then back to C major. In root position, these chords have a lot of parallel motion, which means all the notes are moving in the same direction at the same time, which is considered to be undesirable in some genres. And if we split the bottom, middle, and top notes of the chords into individual voices, as if performed by three different people, we can see that there are several large jumps, which can be a bit difficult to perform. However, if we instead use inversions for the F and G triads, we can get this. It has all the same notes as the previous example, so it will still have the same basic sense of harmony. But there's way less motion between the voices, which is generally easier to perform and sounds smoother. Neither is inherently better or worse, but one version might be more useful depending on context, style, and personal preference. Finally, Roman numeral notation. As we said earlier, triads are often referred to by the relationship to the home key, and one of the most common ways to notate this is using Roman numerals, usually uppercase for major and augmented chords, and lowercase for minor and diminished chords. You can also indicate inversions in the Roman numeral system. Root position is just the Roman numeral, but first inversion and second version are written this way. It's a bit of a weird relic from the Baroque era called figured bass. The use of figured bass is pretty rare these days, yet this particular notation endures. Thinking of chord progressions and numbers is very useful not only for analysis and ear training, but to easily transpose into other keys. Because major scales are all built using the same pattern, chords from different keys, like C major and A major, will sound basically the same, just higher or lower. A very common chord progression in pop music is 1, 5, 6, 4, repeated over and over. This is what it looks like in C. But, if you know your scales and keys well, you can easily transpose into another key very quickly without describing the chords individually. This can be very useful if a song is too high or too low for a singer. So, to summarize, triads are three note chords that can be written as a third and fifth above a root note and come in four qualities which are defined by their specific intervals. They are derived from major and minor scales and can be described by their position in a given major or minor key, sometimes with notation to indicate their inversion. And that's just about everything you need to know about triads. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and check the description for links for more videos. Thanks for watching!